few series of videos, we're going to talk about converting artwork or lines to uh, and shapes to stitches. So this could be run stitches, satin stitches, fill stitches, uh, or some specialty stitch types. We're not going to go into a lot of details about settings of um, the different stitch types, but just want to show you how you can convert things from simple uh, lines and shapes to the different types of stitches. So you can see on the screen that I have a number of different shapes, just regular lines, some lines that have a little bit of curve to them, some rectangles, kind of more like a square, just some different shapes here. And the important thing to to know and learn in the software is what each of these different types of stitches you can convert to, what they do, how they act. Um, for example, down here on the bottom left, you have the run stitch options and even a steel stitch. And basically how these work is when you select something, uh, either artwork or even it could be another like a run stitch or something like that, that's a single line it will convert it to a line of stitches. So for example, this is artwork. You can see it over here. If I click on this run, it's now going to become a run stitch. If I put in 3D view, you can see that it actually has that those stitches. And not only that, but now I can do a slow redraw and actually see those stitches being created. So I turned it from artwork to a running stitch and it's important to know that even if you choose like a rectangular shape or even like this one that's more complex and you convert it to a run these all just go along the outer edge all four of these right here follow the edge they don't fill in the middle with stitches and so if i choose even the steel stitch right here you'll see that it puts a steel satin these are like line input um, stitch types so let me go to undo and I want to get it back to artwork just so you can see it there. So when I'm working with something that's a line that's not, um, that's definitely not a, not closed, like this is a closed shape. Whenever you're working with something that has an open end, you definitely want to be utilizing one of these right here. You don't want to utilize the satins, which are all located right here. So these are different types of satin stitches. Those require you to have two sides. A fill stitch, it wants to have an enclosed shape. It's going to fill the entire shape with stitches. So it's just important to know kind of how they work. If you choose something like this square and you choose a run stitch, it's going to fill the outside. If you choose a fill stitch, it's going to fill the entire middle of it. It's also important to know the limitations. So um, a satin stitch will also go undo one more time. Will also work with a solid object or a um, closed shape object, but the stitches go from side to side. So you don't want to be working with a large area because satin stitches can really only be so wide. So you need something that's a little bit more narrow. So if I choose this one and I come down to like an auto satin, it's going to generate the satin stitches going across. If I choose this one and I do an auto satin, it will create it and it will actually um, make it a split satin. So it's doing a about this area right here then drops a stitch comes down down so it can't do a satin all the way across because this is just too big of an area so it automatically splits it at about seven millimeters so you can use a satin stitch in this um, for this size of an object you just need to understand that it's going to split it up because you can only go so wide typically on something you wear seven millimeters wide is all you want to go most things are going to be five millimeters or less um you don't do satin stitches wider than five millimeters very often and but if you choose to create a satin it will automatically split it if it's too wide that's a nice safeguard in the software. So something like this that's larger, it's definitely going to be the fill objects and all the fill objects are right here. So you can see this broken up by these little dots and this line right here. So this is ones that work with 
um, the outer edge or if it's not closed you use these run in the steel options if it's a uh, narrow on one on uh, like one side and it's a, a wide structure you might use a satin stitch if it's a big fill area a big area to fill in with stitches you definitely use a fill stitch so it's kind of how it works so in these videos we're going to break down each one individually I just wanted to show you that these are the different types of things that we would work with um, or shapes um, that are either open on both ends or they're closed and some are thinner closed shapes and some are wider thick closed shapes. And so it's just important to understand what types of uh, tools work for each. So in looking at this example, these right here are, everything can work for a run stitch or the steel stitch. Any of these, you can apply that to it. Um, it's the most versatile, but um, you need a closed shape for the other ones. And the closed shapes being something like this one any of these others are closed shapes and but this would be a good candidate for a satin stitch so with this you could even do a satin stitch for this object if I do a, a convert it to a satin you can see that it'll do a satin um, this one definitely a fill these definitely fill stitches this one you could do as a satin this is kind of a large one but if I do an auto satin um, it will convert it to that and it will automatically break it up. Um, that's another thing is this is a good candidate for that, but uh, for a satin, but it is kind of large, but watch as I make this smaller, it will have less and less of the split satin look because it's getting narrower. So you can see how that kind of works. And now we're basically at where it's not splitting it at all. As far as the, um, for the width, it will still split it here because there's no way for it to to do both sides there. Um, you just kind of have to understand how satin stitches work. Even though if I click and drag this, you'll see that it's still just one object. It's not broken up in this area right here. It's still showing it as one object, but the software is making a split here virtually and when if I save this design, it will actually create um, this into two objects, basically. This is all one object, and then this is one object. Uh, there's no way to do it all as one with stitches. So it's just important to kind of understand how, how it works. And so in the next few lessons, we're going to talk about converting different lines and shapes into all of these different types of stitches down below. So we'll see you in the next video.